Welcome back. Global Money Week is a worldwide celebration held in the month of March to empower the next generation to be confident, money savvy global citizens. I like that part. Money savvy. Yeah. Global citizens. Oh, global citizens. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> global Money Week, a CYFI initiative, is an annual financial awareness campaign built to inspire children and young people to learn about money matters livelihoods and entrepreneurship we believe that today's children and youth should become empowered economic citizens capable of understanding the importance of saving and equipped with the skills to be employed and create their own livelihoods not going to look for jobs yeah yeah mm -hmm. anyway so global money week is taking place oh it's already taking place it ends today. Actually. It actually ends today. today. Okay, it's been on since the 12th of March. And some people have been doing things about that. So let's get them to tell us more about it. So we have in the studio, Simi Wogugu. She called me her best friend. Executive Director, Junior Achievement Nigeria. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And then Ms. Lolade Awobade, Representative Bankers Committee of the CBN in charge of financial literacy. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. So let me start with you, Alalade. In the course of working with the children, what did you see? Uh, so we've been working together with Junior Achievements on this project, so Global Money Week, but especially Financial Literacy Day, for a little bit over five years now. And I think personally, I've seen the growth, the impact that we're having um, as a group, as bankers. Uh, right to, in 2017, I think our impact numbers were over 200,000. Um, and we see when we go in to teach, when our MDs are teaching in the classrooms, when our uh, employees are teaching in the classrooms, that there's such an, a, an amazing response. You know, these children are intelligent, they want to learn, and indeed, after we deliver these lessons, because we also measure impact, we see the growth in knowledge. So I think for me, it's impact growth that I've seen um, so far. Mm. Now, Simi. I have to ask you immediately, how do you select the schools that take part in this project? Okay, so the way it works is the central bank uh, works with us to develop the curriculum. We mm -hmm. develop the, they tell us what they want to see in the curriculum and we also use the Global Money Week uh, modules to develop the curriculum. And we develop primary and secondary school curriculum and then the some banks decide that they will select the schools that they already work with but most of the time junior achievement uh, provides the schools and they're mostly public schools within the region that the uh, central bank has mandated for the banks to go into they select uh, 30 so we select 30 schools in each uh, for each bank so there are about 30 banks so in all oh. about 900 schools yeah. across 35 states um, in Nigeria, so it's a very a, busy week. <laughs> yes, that's a it's huge a very number of busy schools. week for us. A huge number of schools mm, and um, huge number of children too. Huge number of children. We usually reach about between eighty and ninety thousand students. And you mentioned yeah. primary school. There are few that do primary schools. Most of them do secondary schools. I would have thought. <laughs> those that do primary, what exactly do they teach these little children? 
Oh, but financial literacy eight, goes nine. for to as young as age two or age five even because you need to start teaching them about needs and wants. Mm -hmm. So they need to understand because for a child, sometimes everything is a need and you need to understand that, no, this is a need and this is a want. A lollipop, we can do without it. For but now. for many, it's money to put in their piggy bank. <laughs> it's money to yes. put in their piggy bank. <laughs> and once they have the money in their piggy bank, they start thinking of how to spend it. It's not coming out when it gets in the piggy bank. So they have to understand that too. Saving, they have to understand what it entails. But in secondary school, um, then they start thinking about, oh, but I have money, I need to do a PS4, I need to buy a game, I need to... Well, if that's a, a want. What are your needs? You need to start saving up to. And then they start understanding the value of money as well. So it's never too early. Okay. Mm. Laura, why is a CBN sponsoring this? So there are, different, there are different parts to that answer. Um, one, there is a push for increased financial inclusion. So we start with children in secondary school, primary school, because the CBN believes that it's got to, that knowledge has got to be a part and parcel of who the individual is to allow them to understand the need to be financially, financially included. Um, so that's one angle. Um, the second angle is really just doing its part. So the CBN is just contributing to our, our nation today, building, um, trying to build the, the structure and fiber of who we are as a nation. Um, but it, it's really, it really shouldn't just be about the CBN. The impetus really is for all, all members of society, government, private organizations, to chip in um, to increase our levels of financial inclusion in Nigeria today. So, yeah. Okay, junior achievers in Nigeria, you've, you've, um, you've been really, really enthusiastic about children. About, you know, in fact, you told us the other time, from age five upwards, you, you're interested in them and what they do. So, but now you're talking Global Money Week and students. You said that they need to be taught needs and wants. How effective has it been? She said you've been doing this for about five years now. Yes, over five years. Um, and it's been very effective. We've had situations where stu students have actually tackled a, an MD of a bank and say, why are you here presenting financial literacy to me when I can't walk into your bank and open an account? I have to go with my parents. You know, and they and then <laughs> they have to understand why that it's for your protection, so you don't go into a bank and someone tries to sell you a product that you you know really you don't, don't understand. Understand it's for your protection, but there are ways that you can also influence your you know uh, financial literacy by making sure you engage with your parents to say how is my money working for me, and by doing this financial literacy, you actually understand the different. I mean, we were at the um, Nigerian Stock Exchange yesterday with some schools and they rang the closing bell and one of the things I said to them was look it's not only about needs and wants and all that but it's also about learning how your money can work for you now so that when you are older you know that there are different streams of income there's paid employment there's investments there's consulting there's so that you know when you do the investments in your sleep your money is just working for you and you don't even have to so it, it, it's a way to also encourage the young people to start thinking about saving the future when they go investment. into investment, even mm. when they go into government, say mm. they don't go into business, they go into government. We have a lot of leaders who don't even know how to generate revenue for their states, you know, and you you wish they had had financial literacy when okay, they so were. So is it too school. late to teach these leaders or the adults financial literacy? <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, so not, it's not junior. It's not junior. They're not to take you to the gym to the younger generation. Yes, we have bankers committee for, for educating the uh, different... Yeah, so let's go. Lolani, you talked about inclusiveness <laughs> and all that, and you decided to go to the children to sponsor what's happening with the children. Yeah. How about the adults, their parents? I mean... Okay, so one of the things... Even the politicians. Right. No, one of the things we've actually seen come out of the program, and we, we constantly communicate this before we start teaching a lesson, is... Yes, children, you're here today learning about this, but you've got to take the message out. And you find that they do. So as a bank, when we go in to teach, we like to leave something behind. We like to encourage them to come and you know, uh, set up an account with us. Um, but what happens is usually, because they come from poor homes, sometimes their parents don't have accounts. But what 
happens afterwards is through the process of the child opening an account, we capture the parents. And once we make an impact on each child, we find that they go back to their classrooms, they talk to their peers, they say, oh, wow, you won't believe who came to Sorry, teach us today. Me, you said because they're from poor homes. Does that mean it's not just for the elite schools? Oh, yes. No, no, it's definitely not for... In fact, she said, she said public that. schools. Yeah, we discourage yeah. that. Public yes. schools, yes. not private schools. Yes. Mm -mm. We, 